All right, hey everybody, welcome back to the eBay shop. My name's Corey. I'm Teresa. And we are Grams and Pops Vintage, and we are releasing the official, only one in the world, SparkleBot 101 video. <laughs> right? <laughs> yep. <laughs> That's what we're doing today. We've been asked, not by one person, by two people at least. Yep. Well, two people exactly, actually. I'd make it sound like it's more than it is. Two people have asked if we would do a video on SparkleBot jeans or have asked questions specifically about those genes. So we have. so we're gonna give it to you. We're gonna give you the, that sounds bad. <laughs> we're gonna give you the secrets. We're gonna give you the inside track into our money-making sparkle butt genes. Yes. So that's what today's video is. But as usual, we do have things that have to go out today, things that need to be packed up. So we're gonna go through some of those too. And what are the first couple of those? We sold some real tree camo nylon canvas belts. Yep, some women's belts. Yeah, they've been on for a while. And the funny they thing about been. this is, they came out of our storage. Yeah, we so don't, don't have anything in them. No, but I just sent out offers for it for nineteen ninety nine, and then magically today, this morning, they sold full price. They sold for full price. Yeah, we'll take it. They sold for twenty four dollars and ninety nine cents plus shipping for the pair. Yep, we That's listed them as a lot, belt. right? Yes, they're yeah. together. Hey guys, back for sticker time again. We are going to go check, well, Teresa's going to go pick a sticker off of the door here. Well, don't pick it off the door. Leave it on the door. We're going to pick a sticker from the door and let's go see who we got today. All right. The spinning wheel's this... going. <laughs> who we got here? We have the Daily Cabbage. Oh, the Daily Cabbage. The Cabbage Patch Queen of YouTube here. Yes, she is. We met her in Cincinnati. Yep. I but think that's where we got the sticker. It is. It is. So if you want to know stuff about Cabbage Patch Kids, check out her channel. Yep. So the Daily Cabbage, that's the sticker and the channel. We'll put her links in here. Go check them out. The next item we sold was a Barbie. She is not Barbie, but she is a Mattel brand. She is a Mattel Sensation Jazzy Doll. Jazzy Doll. She has her necklace and her earrings. Yep. She is nude. Barbie-esque. Yep. So what does she go for? $14.99. $14.99. We'll sell them for that. Yes. Yes, we will. All right. So the first thing you have to know going into your, your new sparkle butt gene adventure. Your sparkle butt journey. Your sparkle butt journey, as it were, <laughs> is what brands to look for to begin with. Yep. Now, we don't, we don't dive too deep into jeans. We have just a very few brands we yep. we would consider our sparkle butt jeans that we look at every time. And the sad piece is that some of them aren't even sparkle butt, but they're, we they're not, them but into we've, our sparkle butt category. They're, they're, they're fancy butt at the very least. Yeah. They, have, they either have some kind of bling or some kind of threads or whatever yep. on the butt. So what are the brands we look for? So the three main brands that we look for are Miss Me, Rock Revival, yep. and Silver. Once we see the brand on them, we usually see the patch on the back or whatever. We spot yep. them pretty easy. Do you want to show yep. them what they look like? This is Miss Me. They normally always have this Miss Me patch. Um, some of them don't have this, but they will have Miss Me embroidered on the back. Yep. So that's Miss Me brand. These are silver. Some of them have this silver patch on the back as well. Not all of them. Or it's embroidered the word silver. Yep. But they also have that tag. Yep. What tag is that? The silver. Yes. And they usually say silver jean company. The other ones are usually, these next ones are the ones that are usually <laughs> Very easiest to spot. So these are, these are actually Rock Revival men's jeans. Um, but you will notice the, or the first thing I notice when we go into it is the orange, the orange. Threading? The orange, yes, that stuff. And the I orange cannot, embroidery? Embroidery, that was the word I was trying to get out. I usually notice the patches and on then the, the back patch. right away. Yep, most of them will have this Rock Revival patch. Some of them yep. don't necessarily have it as big, but these are the three main brands that we look for. We, we haven't dove into many other brands. We know there are some other brands yep. that we intend to kind of look into a little bit in the future, but these are the three brands that kind of coined sparkle butt for us these yes. are the ones that we know every time we pick them up as long as we follow our own rules on picking these up they're going to sell and they're going to be a decent profit oh, sorry i'm digging in the pockets of them to see if there's any money <laughs> <laughs> i didn't check them when we got them reseller trick always check the pockets <laughs> oh i didn't check the little pocket okay 
So part of the reason that brought about the whole sparkle butt jean part, a little bit of background maybe, is Miss Me's are the biggest one known for that. They them. have a lot of bling. They are lots of blingy. Lots and lots of blingy. So they have, they either have jewels, they have rhinestones, yeah. they have buttons, they have like all kinds of sparkly stuff. And we'll get into more of that later as we go on here. But those, those for now are the brands. There are a few ones that we're thinking about looking at in the future. One of yep. those being Ariat jeans. Yep. We know those have value. Oh yeah. We just don't know a lot about them. So we're going to start looking at them, yep. but... We don't, we don't know where they fit in. We do know they fit into our sparkle butt category because they have a lot of the, the fancy embroidery on the pockets. It seems like everybody wants to make their butt look fancy. Yep. Um, so. Two of the other brands that one specifically that I think is, is a mimic of the Miss Me are, I think it's called Vigros, V-I-G-R-O-S-S or V-I-G-R-O-S. -S. I don't. Are they fancy on the butt? They do. They have a okay. lot of the like blingy stuff. That's why they kind of throw me off when I first see them. And then I have to like open it up to see what they are. So. I don't know about those ones. You said you had two. Oh, the other one is Cinch. I don't think they're Cinch. really sparkle buddy, but we'll see. they're right in those there. Those are some jeans. brands. Don't take our word on those brands because we don't know anything nope. about them. Other than those are ones we were going to start looking into when we see them. We're going to start comping them. Yep. But for now, Silver, Miss Me, Rock Revival, those are the ones that every time we see them, we're going to look them up as long as they meet a few criteria. Yep. Well, actually, good. if they meet certain criteria, we're not even going to look them up. We're yep. just going to buy them. <laughs> yep. So, yep. all right. So let's look at what's sold next. Next up. You can't really see what's in here. Sure and I don't can. recommend. It's on oh, the front of the box. Oh, yeah. But there's more than just that in there. <laughs> um, so this is a Nikon Coolpix S70 camera. It is a point and shoot camera. Yep. It comes with the, it's a red fancy camera with a charger, a memory card, and it has the manuals and disc in it with it, I think Ooh. too. These point and shoots are always worth looking up because it seems like nobody values them at garage sales. They all mark them at two, three, five bucks. And even if they're corroded, I think, I know we've mentioned this before. We look them up based on parts only value. We always assume they're junk and they don't work and we're going to sell them for parts. Oh. And even at parts, they sell. 20 30 dollars but lately the battery operated ones not the ones with the lipro batteries or the whatever yeah. the lithium batteries like the double a batteries. yeah the type. ones with the double a batteries we've started carrying double a batteries with us so we can so we test can. them as so. long as it's not corroded in the compartment yeah. but look them up based on actual parts value yeah and as long as you can make money on them at parts value we pick them up because they always sell and if if you clean them up or if they do work or you can get them working, they sell for substantially more. So that one actually sold for how much? That one sold for $89.99, but we only paid five bucks for it. Yep. The next item. This sold one we've had for on a minute. Sale. <laughs> Maybe we had it listed high, but according to all the other comps out there, we didn't. We were right mm -hmm. up there with them. So I don't know. If you've been watching for a while, we mentioned that we went to this this little thrift shop, the little mission thrift shop, and we bought a rag bag, a, a paper bag full of t-shirts. Yeah, we bought two of them. I think we bought and there was a bunch of band tees and stuff in there. We paid a dollar or five dollars? I think it was three dollars per bag. Something like that. It was very cheap for the whole bag of, of shirts. Yep. A lot of them were single stitch, a lot of more band shirts. This is a collective sole dosage From shirt. From 1999 tour shirt. Most of these shirts have sold. This one just hung on. It did like collective sold, just didn't have a big enough following, I guess. Or we priced it out <laughs> but, of their range. But I said it was, I looked at, I've double checked that comp yeah. on that like twice. And we've had this on 25%, 30%, 40% sales, and it's never moved. Nope. Finally, it went on a 50% off sale. Yep. And it sold for how much? $62.50. And I, we have nothing in this. I mean, at this point, we're so far ahead on those sales. Because we sold a lot of those for over a hundred dollars yep, for those other shirts. Yep. Part of our criteria for buying sparkle butt jeans, and it, rather or not, we're even going to take time to look them up, mm -hmm. is size. If they're not the right size, if they're too small or they're not a good size that actually sells, we don't. We won't even mess with them. We'll just leave them there, even if they're dirt cheap. So, Correct. if if they fall in a certain size range, we will always take the time to at least look at them, even if it seems like they're priced high. Yep. So our my size criteria for it is they have to be a 27 or above. Yep. 27 is even getting on the size it where is. it's going to hang on for a while. Like it's going to take a while to sell a 27. And I didn't realize like a 27 is like a size 6 or 7. 
I think. I don't know. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. I don't understand the whole 27 because you look at guys' jeans and I don't I don't know how. I know how guys' jeans are. I don't know are. how they measure them either. I just know the number. Like if it's if it's usually like 28, I think at one time we said 28 and above, mm -hmm. but we've kind of migrated down a number. But 27 and above will sell. 30 and above is where they start getting really good. Yep. I watch out for the bigger ones because they're, yep. for some reason, and I... I probably wear up there too, but I think I think <laughs> I think big girls wear pants out faster. I do. Oh, hey, and big guys like the the pants, the Rock Revival, the men's jeans, they sell really good. And the bigger size, even in shirts, two, three, four, five XL shirts, the big sizes go quick. So if you're finding them size thirty and above, those are usually the ones that, that go really good. For the men's size jeans, I think I would stick to like a 34 and up. Once you yep. start falling below the 34, you're getting into some some smaller jeans and they Normal don't size move. Normal dudes. <laughs> yeah, they don't just, they don't move as well. They will move as long as you don't go too small. They yep. will still move eventually, but in, in terms of actually buying them and paying a decent price and getting rid of them quick, 34 and above on the men's side, I would say. Mm -hmm. The and other piece the with bigger, those, the better. Yep. The other piece with those was I bought some jeans. They were size 44. So they were good, a yep. good size. Watch but, the length. Yep. They were shorts or they had been altered to be short yep. and they sat around for Not shorts as in you're going swimming. Shorts as in <laughs> it was a 44 waist and a 13 28. inch leg. Yeah. Like, like they were for a short stocky dude. <laughs> they were what normal, if a normal person put them on, they would be high waters. Hi, waiter. I, I think the person wearing those was probably pushing 280 and they might have been 4'4". Four, four. <laughs> I think so. I so think be so. careful not to buy them if they're too short because guys generally don't wear capris. I don't know any guys that wear capris. <laughs> so look for, you know, just kind of use your common sense. Look for a normal size, a 32 yep. length. I do hold them up to myself a lot because I'm yep. not short, but I'm not tall either. Yeah, you're normal size. So. Yeah, I'm fun size. I'm not fun size. <laughs> You're not fun size. <laughs> We're normal size folk. Yes. So yeah, that's that's kind of the size guidelines we look at. So nothing complicated. It's women's size 27 and up. 27 is the very bottom yep. end. So look them up if they're 27s for sell to rate. And then men's size 34 and up. Watch the length. Make sure you're not buying them too short. That's it, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, that's it. Let's look at what's sold next. We sold some Harley Davidson OEM emblem jacket or vest snaps. Don't Is that what those were? Yes, they okay, came so out of our storage. I won't unit. take them out of here, but they're they're the buttons that go like the snap buttons that yep. go on the front of a shirt or a jacket or whatever. Yep. And they are they have the Harley Eagle emblem on them. And they have all the pieces to put together to be able to yep. snap them. So they're new replacement ones, basically. Correct. Correct. What did those go for? Twelve dollars and ninety nine cents. There you go. But they came out of our storage unit, so it's okay. Okay, the next item, I still kick myself for buying because I didn't do my due diligence on it. We, yeah, we messed up on this one. I bought five of these. I think there were five. Yeah, because I only listed three. Yeah. I bought five of them. They are um, AMT Ertl models. We've yeah. sold two of them already. One sold for really good. This one didn't sell for bad, but... We've seen quite a few people buying models yep. and doing okay with them, so we got excited, I think. I did. I got excited, and I... I, the lady didn't show any pictures of the inside, which again, it's my fault. I made them error. And she did even list in the listing, most of these have never been touched, they're brand new. Yeah, so it threw so me off. So we took her on her word. It, it is what it is. They weren't a big investment. Nope, 10 bucks a piece. I listed three, I've sold three now, and this one was one of the better ones I sold. What'd that sell for? $29.99. Now, little backstory on this. Our whole reselling journey started by selling this exact car. Oh, it did, didn't it? We had, this was my project car. We had an actual 71 Charger project car and I wasn't working on it. It just sit in storage forever. So we decided to sell that car and take the money mm -hmm. and fund our start into reselling. That is the actual car we sold. I Only, didn't even think It didn't look that, that nice. <laughs> no. And I do have the little, the little Hot Wheels. Somewhere, it's like, green, isn't it? It's a green one of this car still new in the in the pack. I was gonna just throw in with this. I it was in here somewhere. I, I don't know. But yeah, that's that's the car that started it all for us. So it's good to see that one go out. Yep, and for a good price too. All right, condition. 
condition is a big one for me. And it's hard to tell with jeans nowadays because they're all factory made to be distressed. Yeah, they're all made to be kind of beat up condition wise, but there are a few spots you really want to pay attention to. One of them is the hem, the very bottom. Yep. People tend to buy pants that are a little too big for them lengthwise and they walk on the hem Yep. So, and they tear them to crap. Yep. If they have just a little bit of wear around the bottom, that's not a big deal. Yep. I don't I don't worry about it if it has just a little bit of wear. But if it, I've seen some of these jeans. Them, they're completely separated in half. That though. have a big like this in a the back mark. of the heel. <laughs> and I'm like, nope. So I don't look at those. Yeah. Um, the other area to look at, which I can vouch for. <laughs> is the thighs. Call it the big girl blowout. <laughs> yes. So always look at the thighs and the, yeah. the like the crotch area on women's jeans. Not as much, I mean, not as much on guys just because guys don't typically have you big wear thighs. wear them out like this. Like, <laughs> yes. it's, it's the rub from walking in them and it actually wears the <laughs> denim out. You want to know a true story? I know this story. <laughs> <laughs> so the other day we were out planting flowers and I didn't think anything of it and we were all sweaty and hot and whatever came in and sat down and I felt a breeze, <laughs> just a breeze. And I looked down and I start, I, like I gra- I touched my pants and lo and behold, there was a rip about this big yep. right in my thighs. And we actually have been caught by this before where we bought jeans that looked pretty good. We didn't see anything wrong with them and we nope. sold them, but when they got there, they did a closer inspection and the thigh had been worn so thin that it was just starting to come apart. Yep. So you really have to pay attention when you're buying women's jeans, especially in the bigger sizes. Check the inner thighs of the jeans and make sure they're not really thin. You could feel it. I mean, it almost almost feels like t-shirt material because it's just been worn down from rubbing. So when you're buying these jeans, check the inner thighs, make sure they're not worn out. Because if they're going to come back, that's probably why. So the other thing that I heard some other people talking about was one of the people that... um, that went and asked about this, was talking about it in a video they had, but I don't necessarily look to make sure that every single rhinestone bead, jewelry, whatever is on on the the pockets and stuff. Yeah, if there's a little bit of a missing, nobody's gonna notice. They'll never know. That's, (laughs) I was just gonna say, they'll never know. Now Um, we have, we have actually listed pants with missing gemstones or broken gemstones or missing snaps or whatever, as long as you, yeah, or different snaps that have been repaired. As long as you point it out and and put put it as part of the condition in the listing, yep. they don't seem to care. I mean, it's just normal no. wear and tear on these. Yep. If you put that much bling on your back pocket and sit on it, you're gonna yeah, you're gonna lose a few. And especially like on the on the Miss Me and the Rock revivals on their leather logo patch on their on they their tend back. To shred up. The two, the there's four little button things or They're whatever like that hold it on. Yeah. And sometimes, I mean, I've even sold them where one or two of those is missing. Yep. So those are big things. So I, it does, condition does matter on those things. Just make sure you're noting them. Yep. And I also do very, very like high over level look for stains. Like I will hold them up just to make sure there's no real visible stains yep. on them. Um, the other thing is, is with all of the factory distressing that's on them. I do try and look at them to see if you can tell that it's factory distressed versus the other day, Corey pointed out a pair of jeans and I was looking at them and I flipped them around and there was a big rip like right across the knee, which I know is popular now, but. Yeah, but you could tell if it was like a rip that wasn't intentional. Mm -hmm. Like you could tell somebody tried to like, like crouch down and the knee just ripped lengthwise. Yep. Yep. You could kind of tell if it's a new rip that isn't frayed around it or anything. So pay attention to stuff like that because that will definitely hurt the value. Yep. But, condition is everything with those jeans. Yeah, you're you're looking for jeans that are distressed and ripped and torn, but be careful that they're not ripped or torn. Yep. And I do also know <laughs> yep. I do note in my listings that there's no rips, no tears. Once I notice what's factory. Other um, than factory. Yep. No rips or tears other than the factory items. Yep. So that's with condition. Those are the spots. Make sure you check the inner thigh. Note any of the buttons or bling or rivets or snaps that are missing or messed up and that's and then stains stains would be the next biggest thing just make sure you get them under a decent light and check that's it yep and i've I've listed jeans that have stains but they're faint like you only see them in the bright light and if they're not like a grass stain all the way down the the front or something you're usually okay if it's a little spot stain or something just point it out men's jeans are really really tough ones because 
women's jeans don't necessarily stain down it, but guys like wipe their hands and stuff on it. And we're, so, we're pigs. <laughs> I don't know. But guys <laughs> jeans, I watch a lot because there's really like on the front of the legs. on the front of the legs. They like yeah. to either wipe their hands on it or they wear them while they're working. And so you'll get stains yeah. down them. So, so recommendation guys don't wear rock revivals while you work. Carry a shop <laughs> rag. Wear crappy jeans to work. Crappy jeans is a secret to life for me because I go through them quick. Uh-huh. <laughs> I will tell him to change them before he goes to do something that I know he's going to get dirty on. All my jeans are dirty. And they they, they don't it. last. I can buy brand new ones and they're stained in like a day. So, so it's what it is. Buy crappy jeans. Don't buy expensive jeans. <laughs> Only we want them to buy expensive jeans. Well, so what did we sell next? We sold a CB radio. This oh. did not last long on my marketplace. We sold a Cobra 29 LX Professional 40 Channel CB with the little... <laughs> okay, it's a mic. <laughs> sure, whatever that's called. It's a... Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> so yeah, it's actually a nice CB. It's missing the power cord and the antenna, but that's all that's missing. And we did test it. It's fully functional. Yep, we have a... We have a power a 12 supply. 12-volt power supply that we used yep. to test. We used it to test that. We used it to test our... We used to... We... we own it because we used to build custom electronics that we yep. would have to test all the time yep. and so we're able to test stuff like this pretty easily usually yep. i used to have one of these in my car in high school i didn't my in, brother probably well, my did. car my little dodge pickup i had one of these in because that's how we used to cruise around town, talk to each other <laughs> we did that on a <laughs> before thing called, cell phones we did that on a thing called the loop the loop so yep. what did that sell for $48.99. CBs are, they usually almost give away. We just bought one at a garage sale for two bucks. But it was a so CB we'll and an eight track it. player. Well, it was a CB and they used metal strips along the side and they screwed it <laughs> to an eight track player so that it's a combo unit. I guess. <laughs> so we'll take them apart and see if either of them's any good. We've been selling some silver, some silver plate anyway. A, l a ladle. <laughs> it is. It's a, it's 19... a fancy ladle. That's. It is. It's really pretty. It's a 1847 Rogers International Silver Silver Plate. It is the Avon pattern. Solid gravy label. I was going to say, can you imagine <laughs> how many Thanksgiving gravies that thing is scooped up? Yeah, but it's kind of small for gravy. Like, you just want one scoop of gravy and you're done. That's like a half a scoop of gravy. Smaller the better for gravy. Because you take mm -hmm. it and you set it aside and then you pour the gravy. You don't want a big spoon you have to set aside. Mm, right i don't know so what does a gravy ladle go for nine bucks nine bucks all right probably the the next big litmus test for whether or not we're going to buy these jeans or not and it's it's actually one of the first things we look at in the first things most resellers would notice is the price yep. we do have price limits on what we will spend on a pair of these jeans sometimes we will look them up regardless mm -hmm. of the price depending on what the jeans are, but usually we have a price yep. guideline. So if I can walk in and there's a pair of Rock Revivals, Miss Me Silvers, not eh, off and on with silvers, but. Silvers are a little, silvers are a little more price sensitive. Yep, silvers I do three to five bucks. Yep. Um, Rock Revivals, Miss Me's, I will, typically if they're five bucks, I don't even look them up, I just grab them. After, well, we, After we grab a check them, condition check and stuff. Condition. Yes, yes. But we won't look those up, we won't count nope. those. We know. Five bucks is a price you can't yep. pass them up if they're in decent shape. Yep. And if they're a good size and good condition, um, I have gone up to 15 bucks for Rock Revivals for after rocks, looking yeah. them up, though. I do yeah. look them up. Rocks are easy to look up for those who are They, they are have curious. a name in them. Yeah, they do. Well, Rocks and Miss Me's kind of both do, but Rocks really do. They have yep. a name. Like, like those ones, if you grab them. What are those? <clears throat> they actually have a name in the waistband to tell you the exact style so you just got to put in rock revival the name and the size and the comps are real easy to find these are rock revival bertone and they are straight they are relaxed straight leg so it'll say bertone mm -hmm. or um i don't know what other i know we did like adrian and avery um a, yeah it's always Darcy. it's usually a name well it's always a name it's always a name yep and like I said, I look it up by that because that's the easiest way. Miss Me's have a part number, yep. like usually like JP, la la la, numbers, whatever. Um, sometimes Miss Me's will also have a name. It just depends on the Miss Me brand. But, but rocks we have gone as high as like 15 bucks a pair. 
We might even slide up into twenty bucks I, a pair, twenty five if they're good enough. I did my I did pay twenty five bucks a pair for the five pair that I bought that were the forty four shorts. I was gonna say men's jeans in the rocks. We will usually spend up for a little more because they tend to sell better on the men's side, and the prices are forty, fifty, sixty, eighty bucks a pair. Like they get up there. Yeah, I have a pair I think that I just recently sold for like one hundred and fifty bucks for Rock Revival men's. Yeah. So the men's jeans we will spend up for a little bit more. The other ones, like I said, the the silvers we usually five bucks is kind of what we're that's our five go -to. bucks is top for yep. silvers. Top five bucks is as much we'll spend. The Miss Me's five to ten. That's usually our range. If they're over that. We might spend a second and look them up, but mm -hmm. usually when they hit the $10 mark, we're not even looking at them anymore mm. for silvers. And then rocks, those ones that have a little bit more forgiveness on them. Yep, because those are, those are fancy. Yep. I did, so we went garage sailing one time. <laughs> so speaking of Miss Me's, we went garage sailing one time with Alicia Inked Picker, and I tried to buy Alicia's mom's pants off of her because they were Miss Me's, but she wouldn't sell them weird. to me. <laughs> Sorry, Alicia's mom. <laughs> wow, I can't take her anywhere. I'll buy them, I'll try and buy them off people. You tried to buy Roman's pants at the I rally did. too. I did, I did. He wouldn't sell me his rock revivals. He can't take her anywhere. All right, let's look at what's old next before you get us in trouble. We sold a toy that came out of our storage unit. None of the other pieces are there. It is only the base unit, but it is a Fisher Price Bright's, Fisher Price Bright Beats Build-A-Bear, Build-A-Beat Stacker Stacking Toy. <laughs> I was gonna say oh Build-A-Bear. I know, it doesn't that's work because I have it shut off. So yeah, it's just a, like a base station that makes sounds. There's a button yep. on top, two you on the stack front. stuff on top of it and it makes noise, but there's no batteries in it. Okay, it's got lights on the side. So yep. cool, I have no idea what it is. What's that sell for? $17.99. Don't matter if I know what it is. <laughs> that was pretty good. Pretty sure that was full price too. And then something we're, oh. we're, we're paying more attention to lately, although they're way more sensitive to being, you got to look them up. Yep. Film cameras, like not the point and shoot digital cameras, but the ones that millimeter. take 35 millimeter film. Olympus, I, that's the reason we grabbed this because it said Olympus. I know to look at these. I know to look these ones up. But film cameras in general, there have been some good ones lately. This was a good one. You just have to be careful. Like these ones, I wouldn't recommend just buying mm -mm. and taking the chance. I would look them up all the time. But the Olympus cameras, 100% look those up Try every not time. To open that. Yeah, I won't. Because that's how it turns on and off. So what, is, what does one of these go for? That one went for $104.99. But, but I have to give a backstory. Okay. Kind of. So I listed this camera and like within an hour and a half, I got an offer for 80 bucks. I went back at the price that I was willing to take for it and he came back at 80 bucks. I just declined it. There were three additional offers that came in for 80 bucks and I counted on all of them. One declined it, the other one just ignored it. And then lo and behold, somebody came through and paid full price for it. Yeah, and if you look that up and look at the comps, you can tell that it has a good sell-through rate at a good price. We were near the bottom of the market. There's no reason to compromise yep. on price, especially on the first day you list it. Sit tight, it'll sell for full price. And the best piece, not the best piece. It does come with, none of the other ones came with batteries, but we happened to pick up the batteries for it because they're special batteries. Yep. And so we picked up a battery to be able to test it Oh, and we so yeah, we a, pulled the battery out of it and took it into the Lowe's. the Lowe's with us, and they had one, so we picked them up right away. Yep, and flipped right on, turned right on, worked the zoom, everything. So I'm excited about that one. Yep. All right, so that's it for this video. We do have a bunch of pack, and we got to get done, but we we will ask you guys too because we are just mm -hmm. dabbling in clothes. We don't do a lot of clothes, mm -hmm. mostly because we don't like the people that buy clothes very very much. They I tend don't... to be a higher return rate. They tend to be rented out and sent back. The one thing that we did do with our clothes. Pants, not so much though. No. Only once in a while. The one thing we did do with our clothes though, because I got tired of people renting them, especially after the lady that sent back the jeans that smelled like cigarette smoke. We took them off the free return. Yeah, we don't do free returns no. for clothes, which I think has helped with people sending them back. It does. Um, we do buy or pay return on all of our clothing. Yeah, they'll, they'll spend $100 to rent a pair of jeans for a weekend and go to a smoky bar with them, but they won't spend $8 to send them back. So take off free returns yep. and you'll eliminate a lot of that. It, it but, did slow down some of our sales on it, but 
Yeah. I'm not but getting not, the returns. Not bad. As long as they have a sell-through rate, you'll still yep. sell them every time. Yep. But I guess the point is, if you guys know any brands yes. of jeans, I'm, I'm not so much interested in just general clothing brands. No. But, but jeans in specific, if you guys know brands that you look for that you do good on, let us know because we are kind of expanding that side yep. a little bit. Jeans are something that we're getting used to listing and we're a little faster at it now. I am. So we are, we are kind of keeping those. You can get a lot of pairs of jeans folded in a tote mm -hmm. and we individually bag them and label them. So we're pretty good at inventory. Them. Yep. And they're, they're easy to pull. You just open the tote yeah. with that number and you grab the number of the bag that's in there and away you go. So we are expanding that side a little bit. So if you guys know any good brands that we're missing here, let us know. And I think that's it for today. That is it. We'll see you guys next time. Hasta la vista, baby.